Yeah. Yeah, I think that's. Um, no, it's it's too good. To be yeah, yeah. Good to be so we can have a party in the afternoon. That's no, good. I'm gonna organize, we're going to organize. There's an unofficial end of Cassie event. Okay, uh, at a place called Rayback Collective. We've done it for the last four or five years. I'll tell you about it on Thursday. Fantastic. So we're we're moving the lectures to the morning. We're going to yeah. We're, we're trying. We're going to consult here and see if anybody screens and nobody's going to screen. Yeah. Yep. See, Oliver and I aren't in charge. We are not in the middle of arranging just things. Just an announcement. So for Friday, so Friday, we actually, initially, we had the, uh, the Daniel and Jen's uh, classes in the afternoon. But OK, we feel OK, Friday. So we moved the two lectures. We moved the two lectures in the morning. Still, the line, uh, then, uh, then we started at night, on the last cosmology class. And then Jen was uh, started at 1045. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. So Sounds we'll good. change it online too. So just keep in mind, okay? So now we got to make sure we're getting copies. So yeah, yeah. No, I'll have to check on that. Okay. Yeah. Good call. All right. So then we'll have our last lecturer. Uh, so, uh, so uh, Jen Hill. So uh, Jen is a professor at the University of Minnesota. So he was on Bianstein model physics. In particular, he's uh, the uh, uh, leading expert on on Kaiser phenomenology. Uh, uh, including like a large hadron collider and as well as possible future colliders, FCC, CETC, and the uh, uh, muon collider. And he has uh, uh, done uh, many different types of collider uh, research, uh, like uh, uh, say the exotic, uh, like searching for standard model, like exotic case of the uh, Higgs boson, uh, uh, um, and uh, uh, like uh, search for like standard model EFT SMAP, and as well as search for new physics supersymmetry, uh, uh, and uh, long-lived particle dark matter and long-lived particles. So and so he will actually talk about how you search for uh, actually uh, new physics as a kind. Okay. So without further ado, let's welcome Jen. Great. <laughs> Can you hear me? Is the microphone working? Uh, Good. Okay. So great. Uh, I put it on. It's a green light. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, uh, great. Um, uh, thanks to the GG for a nice introduction, and it's very nice to come back to Tassie. Uh, I couldn't help to recall that my Tassie was 2011. That was 11 years ago, and you know this year's Tassie title is about the Higgs discovery at 10 years. So you can infer back then, I didn't know Higgs existed. Okay. And most of uh, the, uh, the audience didn't know. So many things have changed. And in fact, the, uh, 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 our knowledge improved. Our perspective on the BSM theory landscape has changed. And our, our idea of what, you know, what, where should we be heading in the future have gradually changed due to many reasons. Okay? So it's, uh, 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 you know, if, if I look back, I think, uh, but I still think the very uh, basic knowledge I learned and the advanced technology I learned from TASI is lifetime beneficial to me. And I keep on using those, those knowledges uh, in my research. So as a tradition, I, I think many lecturers already asked. And let me ask a question of a similar kind. How many of you have done collider work, research, paper? OK, very good. Thank you. Uh, 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 let me call that significant fraction. That's great. Okay. So, how many of you are like uh, feel collider is a bit intimidating? <laughs> Very good. Uh, there's now significant overlap between those people, but also there's the uh, there's people who didn't raise the hand in the first question, but raised the hand in the second. Okay. So I have to say it is a bit intimidating, okay? Because the, the, it seems like the collider knowledge is very sophisticated, but also it's constantly evolving, involves so many branches, and it, every time people talk to each other, uh, you know, under the collider domain, they assume a huge amount of background knowledge. Jargons keep on popping in. Like, uh, you get really confused, right? And uh, you also, if you think about the uh, 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 collider physics, uh, let's say, oh, I want to look for BSM physics at the colliders. Okay? The next thing you'll do is let me search on archive or open the Atlas of CMS uh, like paper archive. You'll see thousands of papers. Okay? The title is very cryptic. Right? You don't know what's going on. And you don't even know, suppose I want to look for a particular signature or I, I, I build a model I want to see. 
you know, whether this model can exist, whether it's ruled out or not, is, there, is it possible to discover this model in the future or not? You don't know where to look, start to look, start looking, okay? Because there are thousands of papers, you know, piling up, lots of results, lots of, uh, lots of uh, hard to understand uh, coding, let's call that, okay? So, uh, because of this, I realized that <laughs> the collider has a very special feature. So, uh, I, I designed my lecture in this way, okay? So, collider physics. with particular emphasis on the BSM part. But I claim every collider search is for BSM. So in that sense, I can just talk about collider in general, okay? Uh, uh, I'm not joking, okay? So every collider search is for BSM, okay? Uh, we will see that along the line, okay? So the, the, the outline of my talk, today's uh, lecture, would be uh, basics, okay? Okay, basics. So many of you who have done collider uh, uh, study or have learned collider physics or particle physics phenomenology in your grad school, you may know this. But however, I would like to go through the basics because I'm going to use them a lot in my following lecture. Only understand the basics. You can start making connections of why do I do various tricks uh, in the searches for BSM physics and also how I connect uh, collider physics to other kind of BSM particle probes, okay? You, I want you to understand the new physics search in a you know, more broad perspective. Not only colliders, but also seeing you know, it's a, uh, as a particle physics facility, how it connects to others, okay? So the second lecture, okay? If I, have, if I can cover the basics in my first lecture, the second lecture will be, uh, uh, like see, uh, 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 general BSM searches, okay? Probes, let's call that. Probes uh, and considerations. I have a high suspicion that I wouldn't finish that, but still my plan is the third one, I will go to the more recent development in you know, exotic uh, BSM searches. And the last one, I want to make sure you have a reasonable future perspective. So I will talk about our future, okay? Future colliders. Okay? Uh, there's a, so much I want to say. I suspect, uh, you know, I wouldn't finish some topics, but I've written a note. I will upload uh, my notes before each, uh, each lecture. Okay? So, very good. So, first of all, uh, let me... Let me see. Let me talk about where Collider stands. Okay, okay. The reason Collider has been, um, uh, you know, it's, there are so many things developed along Collider land because we have to realize colliders. Has been one of the central players of particle physics uh, research. Okay, one of the central players. Uh, so, but. Okay, you, if you know a bit of particle physics history or you check about all of the table of elementary particles, you'll see uh, in the recent decades, we discovered many of the particles in collider facilities, right? In particular, all of you know, we discovered Higgs 10 years ago, right? Before Higgs was a top quark. Before top quark, there was many other particles. There's a whole table of discovery. Not only those particles themselves, but also many, many different properties of, uh, uh, of standard model and the quantum field theory. Okay, so um, there, are, there are many, many uh, knowledge developed around colliders, but let me just put things into perspective, okay? You might have seen this kind of plot for many times, but I just want to place collider somewhere, okay? Let's write down in particular a scale, okay? Uh, let me just write M, okay? The mass of the particle or the, or the scale I'm going to directly probe, produce and probe, okay? Okay, so collide, and this is a coupling, okay? Logarithmic scale, this is supposed to be abstract, okay? So colliders is the central player. Uh, I mean, leave room for future, okay? 
from <laughs> GeV to TeV. In particular, you know many particles exist here, right? We discover them, right? So roughly, okay, it's a it's a well controlled, well defined machine, a precision precision machine in directly probing physics uh, between GeV to TeV scale, directly probing, okay, okay. And the future collider is going to expand the domain. But let me just give some idea of coupling, OK? Depend on this unitarity breaking, you put 4 pi or root 4 pi up to you. 1, 10 to minus 1, oh, man, minus 3, let's call that. Minus, minus 1, OK? <laughs> minus 3. So you can see it's mm -hmm. so arbitrary scaling, OK? But I'm basically saying collider directly probe this in those uh, you know, normally coupled particles. In a very good, um, in a very definitive way. Okay, this is not a one-dimensional plot. It's multi-dimensional because we know each collider will conduct hundreds to thousands of searches. So each model, okay, we probe roughly this kind of region. We can do detailed, detailed mapping of the given model parameter space. Okay, uh, but uh, but I'm really overly simplifying the picture. Okay, so. Colliders, current and past colliders, and in the future collider, we of course, given how much money we have, okay, we hope to probe uh, uh, how ambitious we are. Uh, we hope to probe up to like directly probe up to 100 TV, let's call that, okay, and that enables us to cover broad, upper domain, broader domain, okay. So it does not mean collider is the only place to probe those physics, okay, okay. Okay, so let me emphasize is directly access, okay? Access those scales. Of course, in the previous lectures, like uh, by uh, 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 Philip and Natalia et al., they, they tell you about the precision and the intensity frontier and the dark sector physics. So there's in the many intensity frontier machines, like uh, 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 um, beam dump experiment, et cetera, we can probe those around the GEV realm, or even below, to a very good precision. In fact, to, to a high intensity, we can probe much smaller couplings. So there's a complementarity, over, overlapping regime, but also uh, uh, collider is not, uh, not that, uh, you know, there's, uh, it's not covering everything, okay? Of course, uh, from Peter uh, Graham's talk, et cetera, you see there's a whole, whole, huge domain of ultralight uh, stuff and the quantum sensing, et cetera. They are targets is really the light regime and the, uh, you know, very weakly coupled sectors, okay? But let's focus on the particle realm, okay? And in fact, from the past history, any, every time we make progress uh, 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 in our energy, uh, uh, increase our energy of our probes, we discover new stuff and new properties, right? So our hope is very high that we might be able to uh, discover new, new stuff uh, in the collider, collider domain. Okay, question. Uh, getting downwards on the coupling is just a matter of um, luminosity and more statistics, right? Uh, the, to the leading order, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, you know, devils are in the details, but uh, but let me let me let me agree with you on that uh, simple picture. Okay, so so oh, but that's a good point. Let me let me mention that. Okay, so because it's such a complex, intimidating uh, <laughs> topic, uh, I'm going to simplify things a lot in in my in my lectures. So the hope for my lecture is to set up a picture for you to think about collider BSM probes. Okay. Depend on how much you absorb this picture and how much further reading you have, you might be able to, you know, understand the search is present in, uh, 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 to you. Okay, or if you understand really deeply, you can combine your other skills and develop new search strategies and expand our human knowledge uh, in particle physics. Okay, but really, I I want to simplify collider to make it understandable instead of being very messy and, uh, how do I say, dreadful, okay? I want to make it understandable. So I'm going to simplify things a lot, uh, and, uh, uh, but depending on your questions, I can, I can make things more complex, okay? So let's, let's come back to the GEV to TEV realm, okay? Think about, the, think about new physics, okay? And uh, um, very good, okay? So I'm going to leave the, uh, the discussion on how, how many usage we can have a, uh, you know, on those kind of collider 
uh, uh, knowledge uh, for the later lectures. Okay. Um, so now, I hope that I'm motivated enough for you to pay some attention to the lecture. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so now let me begin lecture one. Okay. Okay. Basics. So I forgot to wear my basic star form, but, <laughs> but let's, uh, let's come from basics. So the basics is very simple, okay? Collider probes is about the energy scale you are probing, okay? That's called a CM energy, okay? Everyone of you knows the Mandelstam variables. Okay, if I'm trying to smash two particles together, okay? Let me take a square root of this, okay? There's the two particular calculations I want to do, okay? If I strike two particles, both of with high energy, especially in the central mass, if I'm sitting in a central mass frame, okay, so the, the uh, E central mass equals two times the E, okay, which means I smash a particle with energy E to another particle with energy E, okay, central mass frame. The other uh, very typical thing you need to know, which actually you should have seen that in, your, in the previous lectures, uh, is fixed target, okay? So if I smash a par energetic particle with energy E, a uh, massive particle with mass M, that's the central mass energy I'm going to ex experience. And this is the scale of physics I'm probing, okay? Of course, I'm in the natural units. That's the macroscopic scale I'm trying to probe, okay? So, um, let me see. Okay. After talking about energy scale, okay, I want to talk about the unit. Okay, the unit is a kind of special for particle physics. Okay, uh, how does anyone know what is one barn? Barn is a unit. How much is one barn? Minus twenty-eight centimeters squared. Ten to the what? Minus twenty-eight centimeters squared. The minus 28 centimeter square. Very good. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. So several of you know that's great uh, to hear. Okay. But let, let let me explain a small story behind this bar. Okay. In, in fact, uh, the, the reason I have to introduce this because I need to make connection to the land scale. Uh, uh, you, when you think about the collider and complementarities with other uh, 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 other frontier like astral particle, etc., they don't use the energy bar. They don't use the unit bar. They more use the, the centimeter square. Okay. So the story behind the bar was uh, the Manhattan Project. So the physicists, uh, of course, want to keep it uh, secret. Okay. So, but they need to chat about what's the uh, the the cross section the the like, uh, the probability for particles to interact okay so they invent the unit bar okay because there's an american uh, idiom you have a question uh, uh, that's very good uh, <laughs> fantastic okay uh, but, uh, by the way, maybe I will purposely write many typos, so it's for you to uh, <laughs> correct. Uh, so, so you want to secretly talk about uh, the cross action, but, but they don't want other people to know they're talking about the nuclear uh, in interactions, right? Neutron scattering on uranium, okay? In fact, the cross action is roughly one bar for that process, okay? So uh, the reason it's called the barn because there's an American idiom that uh, to, 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 to describe someone who aims really badly, saying they couldn't, they couldn't hit the broad side of a barn. The barn is those farmhouse, right, you put stocks in. If you shoot something, you couldn't hit a barn, means you aim really badly. They try to hit the fact that they're talking about some highly interactive uh, particle scatterings. So they, they use your secret word barn to describe those interactions. Okay, but back then the nuclear physicists were the high energy physicists. So the high energy physics keep that tradition and inherit these units. So we talk about the cross sections in barn instead of using meter squared. Okay, but uh, we better know the conversion so we so we can talk to other uh, branches of uh, phys uh, physicists. Okay, so. But, but I don't remember this unit, but what I remember is a slightly different one, okay? I recall that is 
uh, one bar equals about 100 femtometer square. OK? So does anyone know proton size? Uh, uh, anyone say, say it out loud? OK, do you think proton size? Let me use proton size. Something with units of femtometer, right? OK, so there's a, there seems to be a coincidence, OK? Uh, co -in I don't know how to spell the word, but OK. <laughs> <laughs> there seems to be a coincidence, OK? The, pro the cross section to proton, proton collision is uh, if you just think protons hit another proton, they see each other at that scale completely, OK? So w one femtometer square is 10 millibar, OK? OK? So proton-proton collision cross-section, OK? Hard collision part is about 20 millibar, OK? There's a detail of the decomposition. There's a semi-diffractive that is of the outer 20 millibar. And there's also the, 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 the soft uh, collisions that depend on how you decompose stuff, you would call it, uh, you would call it 60 millibar, okay? But you can see this is roughly 100 millibar, okay? These two numbers, okay, matches roughly, okay? It's, it's not exactly like a correspondence because you never specify what's the number in front of a femtometer for me, OK? So the question for you to think for fun and chat with your friend is, is this really a coincidence or a clo closely related to something, uh, some particle physics? OK? What, how do we define the proton size? OK? But of course, there's another thing uh, I need to mention to you, OK? Uh, beyond these basic units, that we work in, uh, uh, we work in natural units, OK? Uh, that there's a useful I didn't, uh, the conversion rate I need to know, okay? Land scale is inverse energy scale. We'll talk about GeV rel, right, and above. So this equals um, times 10 to the 9 picobar, okay? Okay, for those uh, who are not uh, familiar with the, uh, those notations, okay? milli 10 to minus 3, micron 10 to minus 6, nano 10 to minus 9, pico minus 12, fento minus 15, atto minus 18, OK? Oh, we, we will use all those numbers, uh, those shorthand notations uh, 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 in today's lecture, OK? So that's the basic units, um, OK? Any questions? Uh, how is the size of the uh, that's my question for you. <laughs> <laughs> so we can talk about that, uh, you know, after class. But you better discuss with your friends to, to figure it out. Okay. Uh, very good. Uh, so good. So now I want to mention one thing. Okay, that is RHC. Okay, the dominant particle physics facility in our lifetime. Okay. Uh, okay, in the first part of our lifetime. Okay, in the future, we'll have other machines. Uh, we are likely and we are working on, we hope we have other machines. But just let me mention to you, uh, it started commissioning around 2008. My memory is weak because I haven't entered grad school yet uh, <laughs> that year. Uh, but our plan is to make it run until 2038. Okay? So, so far, just to make sure, we only have collected about 5% of the total data, okay, I will tell you the measure. There's 95% of data upcoming, and we haven't, even this 5%, most of them we haven't analyzed, okay? We only analyze those data in some leading channels. So there's a lot more to come, okay? Many fancy upgrades, many things to come. Uh, so I hope you're all good with statistics, okay? So from one tell you, uh, we are not going to see anything new at LHC. I think they are poor statisticians. I think a dance lecture already tell you what's a proper way to think about statistics. Okay. Um, so it is a dominant machine coming up. Okay. Of course, there's a hope that we have a concurrently running another machine in the future that will be covered in my fourth lecture. Uh, but I will. It will be my major example of uh, 
setting up basics and talking about physics in the uh, uh, first three lectures. Question. Um, is LHG not getting another energy upgrade just because of money? Uh, that's, uh, that's uh, how do I say? Uh, uh, anything can be converted to money, okay? So, uh, so ma ma money is a proper measure of difficulty as well, right? So uh, 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 there's, uh, 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 they, they could, okay? But uh, it, it, uh, technologically, you actually learn from Heiser, uh, Heiser's uh, lecture earlier, like in a, on the second week, about how to accelerate particles, what's the, what's the curvature? and what's the radius of the accelerators. So to accelerate the energy without digging the tunnel, I need to increase the magnetic field, okay? But high field magnetic field is very costly. So in some sense, that's money, okay? And also we are not in the mood to do, to, to do massive production of those magnets yet. Uh, so each piece costs a lot of money, so. Uh, uh, so there was comment to the proton size is inverse dollars. That is incorrect, okay? So proton size uh, is properly defined in particle physics, okay? <laughs> so uh, um, uh, the, the scale we are probing is, a, uh, is a inverse dollars, let's call that. <laughs> Very good. So that will be our example, uh, 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 the, the background, the basic setup. We are starting working with LHC, okay? Having talked about the units of how likely processes to happen, okay? There's another, there's another accompanying uh, quantity uh, that is called luminosity. It's, I guess it's hard for you to see this. Okay. There's a accompanying, uh, accompanying quantity called luminosity, okay? I hope, I hope I write big enough, you can see these letters, okay? So luminosity is, um, you know, makes sense, right? Luminosity means how luminous your sources are and uh, how, how bright they are means uh, if you come to particle number, that's how many particles you're colliding, okay? So we, uh, in some sense, it's a beam strength, okay? We accelerate uh, particles, how strong the beam is, okay? So its units is, Naturally, okay, number of particles I'm colliding divided by centimeter squared, okay, divided by second, okay? This is called instantaneous luminosity, okay? This quantity is called instantaneous, instantaneous luminosity, okay? Um, okay, let me just give you a, Typical, typical number, okay? For most of future, a current machine and the future machines, the instantaneous luminosity, typical, 10 to the 34 per centimeter square per second, okay? You may not have a concept of what, uh, why do I define beam strength like this, uh, and what, where does this number come from, okay? But, uh, but let me continue a, a bit about about units, okay? Okay, so 10 to the 34 per, per centimeter square per second, okay, is about 10 nanobar inverse per second, okay? So small exercise for you, okay? You can do this conversion to the nanobar units, okay? And there's another convention. We have lots of conventions in collider physics. Uh, we all know a year equals how many seconds? Anyone know? Oh, great. Wait. Oh, come on, everyone knows a year, but around the pi times 10 to the seven second. okay? Uh, I don't know the exact number. But for collider year, we actually get rid of this pi. A collider year is 10 to the seven second. okay? We get, all that, get rid of that for a reason, okay? We, we think we need to prepare the beam, sometimes we turn down the machine, and maintain it, whatever, okay? So uh, a collider year is 10 to the seven second. So we know, the typical quantity, if I run a collider for a year of 10 to the seven seconds, okay, how, how much uh, luminosity I will get, okay? So this is another quantity called integrated lumi, okay? Uh, should I talk about integrated lumi, okay? Uh, 
uh, before I talk into Great Lumi, let me give a symbol to this. Uh, unfortunately, we use this <laughs> for the for the Lumi uh, instantaneous luminosity, which is a symbol as Lagrangian, but you know we're talking about collisions, okay? But clearly, you can see it has units of inverse cross section, in inverse some barn, right? So we know the rate of collision, rate of something interesting is happening, okay? Which is the cross section times the instantaneous luminosity, okay? Cross section in units of barn, okay? This is in barn inverse per second, okay? So clearly, Collision rate for a given process whose cross section is in barn times this luminosity, luminosity tells me how often, how frequent a uh, process of interest is taking place. Okay? Okay? So, of course, the another interesting and critical quantity we should know is the integrated luminosity. Um, okay, I, I don't have big chunks. Uh, okay. Uh, integrated luminosity. That's very simple, right? I do instantaneous luminosity times time. But it's useful to know, okay? Let's say time, let's call the one year. Let's say I do one year, okay? I will get uh, 10 inverse, uh, 10 inverse nanobar per sec times 10 to the 7 second, okay? So, we can do the unit conversion again, okay? Uh, uh, ten to the ten to the eight, so so nano atom, okay? So point one atom bar, okay? So if I, I run the machine for a year, I roughly get point one atom bar, okay? With such a typical luminosity, uh, nano atom bar inverse, very good, okay? So if I do 10 years, actually that's a typical land scale we're trying to run machines. Uh, here it's 30 years, right? So if you do it 30 years, maybe, okay, for LTC, you'll see three inverse atom bar, okay? That's the design, the integrated luminosity of the LTC. Three thousand inverse fentyl bar and the three inverse atom bar, they are equivalent, okay? So that's the total amount of data we are going to, to do, okay? And this is uh, the typical machine parameter, okay? So now, let me just write, after defining those uh, integrated luminosity, let me just write down, uh, maybe for the small room here, and make it up. Just give you a sense of uh, future colliders. What, what are we talking about? So high lumi LC, three inverse atom bar, okay? We have future linear colliders, ILC, oh, there's a different version, blah, blah, blah. But the, let's say two inverse atom bar of design integrated luminosity. This is the E plus E minus machine. This is a PP machine. Okay? So we have FCC EE based at CERN and the CEPC based in China as proposal. What we talk about is roughly 5 to 20 inverse atom bar. And we have the, the circular proton-proton collider, which aiming at colliding protons at 100 TeV central mass energy, and the Chinese version is called SPC, PPC. The designed luminosity is about 30 inverse atom bar. Okay, so I didn't lie to you, right? I said that there's a typical luminosity, typical collider year, typical runtime. You get the numbers uh, of the same order. Okay, so that's a uh, typical collider we're foreseeing, okay? Uh, I don't know if I have infinite money, uh, probably, yeah. If I have infinite money, I can change those numbers to be very big. It's very interesting to know what's the limiting factor here if you, uh, if, oh, maybe let me ask. Why can't I go to higher luminosity? Anyone has a guess? Time. Magnets will deteriorate. Why don't I? increase the instantaneous luminosity. Hmm? Uh, that's not about detection yet. <laughs> yeah. Any guess? Radiation safety, Radiation safety is an uh, interesting consideration, but uh, that's for muon collider, I think. 
but for, for this one, it's, uh, it's actually about, still about money. But this money, <laughs> this, this money is the radiation, not radiation, it's the synchrotron radiation, okay? I'm going to lose a lot of my power because I'm accelerating them, okay? So those power loss, I have to keep on supplying, su supplying electric power. So my electric bill will go up, okay? <laughs> we, are, we are in the in the energy limited world. So, so you know, there, there are talks about the green colliders, right? Try to recycle energy, blah, blah, blah. But, but you know, there's an there's a electric bill you have to pay that, <laughs> over time. Sorry, is that to generate more protons or is it to, to actually get them faster? Because faster is the synchrotron radiation, right? Yes, but they are exciting all the time. Let's talk about circular collider, right? I'm, they, they, are, they are constantly radiating, right? Synchrotron radiation because I'm trying to curve them, okay? So if I don't, I don't keep on maintaining them or exciting them, I'm going to lose energy. So I have to supply energy to the system. So that's the electric bill I have to pay. Question. Has anyone considered harnessing that synchrotron radiation? Uh, 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 yes. Actually, that's called the light source <laughs> to a certain extent. So we have interface with uh, many other fields, right? Biophysics and chemistry, et cetera. We do have light source, but they don't need such high energy uh, synchrotron radiations. The lower energy, higher intensity would be enough. Uh, uh, but uh, the future is open for you. So if you come up with a good idea of using that, uh, harnessing that energy, uh, you will save the field. So <laughs> great, OK? So. So that's really the, the basics of units. Okay, so now, now let me start talking about what's actually going to, ha what's actually happening when I smash two protons at the RC. Okay, so obviously the probability for them to interact is proportional to cross section. Okay, the rate is, um, that times instantaneous luminosity, how many events I'm going to collide times time, giving up the events of interest. It's very important for us to build up intuitive picture about what's happening, okay? I'm smashing two protons together. Uh, uh, smashing two protons together. That's one piece I was too excited, I forgot to talk about. Um, um, uh, so so let, me, let me mention that, okay? So when I'm smashing two protons together, what I'm actually smashing is two blobs of protons together, okay? So I'm accelerating in one of my uh, beam, uh, 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 you know, beam pipe, I'm accelerating protons in this direction. In other beam pipe, I'm accelerating protons in this direction, okay? So when I'm colliding protons, protons I'm coll colliding a bunch of protons, okay? Just to give a sense. Uh, so obviously instantaneous luminosity is not a magic number, it's actually practically possible, right? So I'm trying to count how many protons are meeting each other, okay? So obviously it's proportional to number of protons in this bunch and number of protons in the other bunch and how frequently they collide with each other. And also, how narrowly I squeeze these bunches, right? If the pro protons are vastly separated from each other, dilute gas passing by each other, most likely they don't interact, right? So I have to squeeze, make sure they, in the fi actual phase space, in the light frame, they overlap, okay? So you can construct yourself, right? It's luminosity is really number of protons in the first bunch times number of protons in the, in the opposite bunch times divided by how narrowly I squeeze them, okay? So the area of this, let's assume they are equal. So basically the size, let me call this size A, okay? Okay, the interaction point size A squared times how frequent they, they collide. So the frequency of colliding, which is also the separation between them. How frequent, you know, this passing by, the next one passing by. Etc. Okay, so that's where instantaneous luminosity comes from. And I said typical is 10 to the 34 per centimeter squared per sec. Okay, question. Um, at the LHC, how tightly are the bunch, bunches squeezed relative to the proton size? Ah, very good. So that's the number you're asking this number. I'm going to give you this number. Okay, so, so it's actually limited by how, how, how well we can squeeze the proton beam. Okay, so this number at the LHC 
is 64 nanometer. Okay? Proton size uh, is femtometer level. It's still uh, pretty big compared to it, but uh, you know, there's a certain extent because they are charged particles pushing them together as a uh, 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 force repelling them. So we are trying our best, okay? But focusing area is typical in nanometer level. Like uh, in particular, like in linear collider, particles pass by each other once and then they never meet each other again, they intersquase more. So they, they try to reach one nanometer level beam spot, okay? So now we can see numbers, okay? Each beam has roughly 10 to the 11 protons, okay? So accelerated physicists, uh, accelerated photon, uh, protons in bunches, each of them contain about 10 to 11. And the separation for, per bunch is, uh, uh, the separation in time is, between these two collisions is 25 nanoseconds, okay? Okay, so frequency is inverse that, okay? So F is 40 megahertz. So let's work out the number, just to give you a sense. I'm not making up. 10 to 11 proton, 11 proton, divided by 64 nanometer squared times 40 megahertz, okay? So uh, this number is conveniently about the four thousand uh, times to the minus 18 uh, meter squared uh, to the minus uh, 14 centimeters squared, okay? 10 to the 12, and 40, and 10 to the 6, okay? So I hope I work out. Okay, I think I work it out. It's 10 to the 34. Okay, so I didn't lie to you, okay? It's really, we're smashing this amount of protons together and try to reach such instantaneous luminosity using our best physicist uh, ability to, to get this number. Okay, okay. Um, uh, interesting question you ask yourself is, uh, sounds like a lot of protons, okay? But how many more of proton I have in the LC tunnel? Okay, 27 kilometer circumference, bunch every 25 nanosecond I have a bunch. You can calculate how many bunches are there and how many protons are there. Okay, the number is small. Okay, so very good. Uh, so, uh, so after showing you, I hope I convinced you there's a collision probability we typically particle physics we call it in pico barn or barn, and then we try to uh, uh, characterize the how strong how intense our beams are, and we know how many interesting events we are going to collect. Okay, so now I want to set up big uh, the intuitive picture. When I smash two protons together, what are the underlying process taking place? Okay, so proton proton collision, typical cross section. Okay, so inclusive, which means that they don't pass by each other as if they never met each other. Okay, uh, so sorry. Uh, so this is a prob This is a cross section. They they pass by each other, but the hard collision hard-ish collision, you will see that's, the, that's a, a topic subject to your definition uh, of uh, later on, okay? But it's uh, around 20 millibar, okay? okay? But the first one we can measure uh, uh, like, uh, uh, with a certain level of confidence with, uh, without too much extrapolation is probably the dominant process. It's called DIJET, okay? Uh, I hope... Everyone knows JET, uh, you learn. Like uh, David told you about the machine learning, you know JET is very fancy. Okay, question. Can you explain yeah. what you mean by hard-ish collision? Uh, hard-ish collision, uh, can, can I save that uh, later on when I introduce the uh, part on distribution functions in, uh, in a few, in a few sure. slides, okay? Uh, very good, so everyone knows JET, okay? So, uh, uh, good, DIGES is cross-section is about uh, 20, micro bar. Here I have to put the additional requirement requiring the jet PT, the momentum in the transverse direction to be bigger than a certain value, okay? So I choose some non-trivial number, 50 GeV is very hard actually, uh, just to avoid uh, uh, the confusions 
about uh, soft collisions. Okay, so 20 microbar. Okay, the next one on my list is W. W production. I produce a lot of W boson. Okay, that is uh, 200 nanobar. Okay, I promise you every letter I will use. Okay, so Z is 50 nanobar. Okay, and then TT bar is 800 pico, pico bar. Okay, let me write down Higgs boson production is about 50 pico bar. Okay, and then there's a diphoton. Do I have di? Oh, I, for, I forgot to write one. Um, before Higgs, let me just. I want to rank them so. WW is about 100 pico bar, and Higgs is 50 pico bar. And diphoton, okay, here I say 10 pico bar, but again, I have a PT on the photon requirement, bigger than certain level, okay? I don't remember exactly what I used, uh, but let's call it uh, like 20 gem, okay? Okay, this, this I forgot, but uh, roughly, okay? So, so obviously when I collide two protons, a series of events, uh, you know, there are many possibilities for what's, uh, what's going to happen, okay? I, I rank them for certain primary events that uh, of interest to us, okay? Question. Uh, uh, um, um, that is, uh, uh, everything will add up, just uh, what uh, did I write down here, um, to the 100, uh, to the 100, okay? Mm -hmm. So there are three categories, okay? There's a hard scattering, okay? Also related to your question earlier, okay? There's a s s hard ish, but we call it a single, single diff diffractive. Okay, there's also a soft collision that mainly made by, by the elastic scattering of protons. So two charged particles passing by each other, like they, they just see, they just, okay, I see you, I exchange a little bit of momentum with you and I, I go by, okay? So the reason we, dis, uh, we separate them, okay? I'm not a super expert on this, but, uh, but really wait for me to introduce the, uh, the, uh, the parton distribution function, okay? But also, you you get a hint. I will show the diagram. I guess you're not including the electromagnetic current. Uh, uh, in what sense? Uh, uh, like, uh, like, do you count the electromagnetic context as an exclusive one, or do you just not consider it? I, I also accounted for that in the, in the, in the last piece, the uh, yeah, elastic question. Ah, very good. So uh, there's a buzzword of trigger, okay? <laughs> the, uh, I believe uh, uh, Heiser Gray introduced that to you, okay? But la let's put trigger later. I'm telling you those processes, in particular those ones, are well-defined process. I can calculate what's the inclusive cross-section, okay? So the reason I have to PT cut for here is not for the reason of trigger. But let me draw the diagrams, okay? So I'm going to draw a diagram justifying why they roughly have this ranking, okay? So again, your basic uh, physics picture, okay? So, um, I'm gonna chalk, okay? So let's draw, let's draw the process, okay? Digest, for instance, okay? Uh, you know, when we're colliding protons, we're actually colliding partons, the quarks and gluons, okay? Uh, let me, Believe me or not for a moment, okay? Uh, I will come back to it later, but let's draw the digest event, okay? So digets, jets, okay, is a concept, okay? Uh, uh, that can be quarks, gluons in the partonic level, what's going on, what's going on, but they, they fragment and hadronize into those objects, so we call this posing a jet, okay? Okay. Um, so, but let's say the, at, uh, for the hard collision, we call it a partonic uh, cross-section in the hard collision. Uh, we do, let's say, I do two quarks 
exchange a gluon. Okay, so this process can get me digest. Okay, so if you are though, let's treat them all massless. Okay, effectively. So in this case, anyone knows the cross section for this? Okay, Partani cross section. Okay, of course it's proportional to one or t. Okay, okay. So what if uh, t goes to zero in the extremely forward limit? Okay, this thing blows up, right? Okay, so there's the this uh, is the this is one reflection one uh, example of uh, 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 you know this uh, t-channel divergence. Okay, so what happens? So the cross section is not well defined if I'm allowing me to ex include extremely forward jets. Okay, so now if I put a minimal PT card on this object, okay, that I introduce a scale, provides a threshold for the process to take place, and that get rid of this divergence, makes the cross section well defined. So that's why here I need to put a card. Okay, not for trigger. Okay, we can design trigger later on, depend on your how fast your electronics. But we need to define the cross section properly. Again, this is an oversimplifying picture. QCD experts, uh, you can teach your classmates about how many subtle issues are associated with those. Okay. Similarly, similarly, for this photon-photon uh, uh, process, the leading cross section contribution is a pair of QQ bar gave me photon. Okay. For masses quarks, you can also check. The cross section, okay, and this is also divergent in the four regime in the massless limit. So I need to put a small cut to give my cross section definition a, a proper threshold and make it finite. Okay, question. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, very good. Uh, I will, it's a, it's a lengthy discussion, okay? Unfortunately, in our, uh, this TASI, we don't have a QCD talk. Uh, I will try to do a justice in my second lecture, give you examples of choice. But here is already some example of choices. Uh, obviously, I want to choose a scale not too low. If it's too low, uh, you know, either I have trouble de uh, uh, de detecting them or uh, their rates just blow up, okay? In fact, uh, in a very low PT regime, let me just mention the buzzwords, like there will be additional logs I need to do resummation. Okay? <laughs> so uh, it, it, again, uh, uh, we want to choose a hard enough cut that let's don't worry about those things uh, when we talk about in, this uh, inclusive cross-section. Okay? So then, so that's why I put the PT card here. Okay? W boson has mass, Z has mass, TD bar has mass. They, all have, they are all massive. Okay? They don't have this divergence. The process is well-defined without cuts. Okay, uh, without the cuts at a certain level. Okay, so so the W, how do I produce W? This is a digest. Okay, so W, a typical process, like Q Q bar prime. They give me W plus minus, give me Z. Okay, there uh, Q Z is Q Q bar. Okay, W prime uh, W is a Q Q uh, uh, bar prime. It's different particles, okay? So that's a cross section I have on them. And then TT bar is, uh, I, let me assume my proton doesn't contain top quark, okay? Uh, it's a tricky business if you want, but gluon, gluon give me a pair of top, top quarks, okay? There are many other processes introducing them, top quark. There's also weak process giving top quark pairs, et cetera, okay? And there's WW and gamma gamma. I can replace it with WW. I don't need to put PT card. So WW gamma gamma is similar here. And the Higgs, I believe, in your first lecture series by Sally, you, you've already seen the dominant production is this process, Google fusion to Higgs, right? Okay. So typical diagram. I didn't exhaust the, 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 the leading contributing diagrams, but I just want to justify the ordering. Let's see the ordering. Where does ordering come from? Okay. So digest, it's reasonable for it to be the dominant one because the proton contains those quarks. The quark have a small momentum exchange. They, they, uh, you know, it's very intrinsic. And the, cup, the process is proportional to alpha. 
uh, squared. Okay? 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 But then for this, the process is proportional to W and also alpha weak. And also this process is proportion has a threshold that the my collision, actual collision energy has to be bigger than W mass. So E C M, the actual one, I put a head here, okay? So the actual collision energies have to be bigger than W, okay? Similarly, this one to be bigger than Z, but why W and Z has small difference? Because their coupling to quarks are different, okay? So you can work out in the details, uh, by refer back to your standard model uh, uh, books, okay? Then TT bar. So TT bar is actually the same coupling order as the digit event. Although, okay, let's uh, assume there's, uh, <coughs> Uh, there's no, uh, uh, okay, uh, but TT bar has a threshold, okay? Uh, the, in fact, the threshold is I have to produce two, a pair of top quark on shell, so it needs to be greater than three, like two m top, okay? Okay, the threshold means I have to co collide the two particles at higher central mass energy, okay? After I introduce a particle model, you will see each higher threshold is a suppre additional suppression in my cross section. Okay, so then you can compare, uh, 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 you know, WW and gamma gamma. Again, uh, again, one has uses mass to regulate the cross section, the other uses PD card, but the coupling strength is different. One is uh, alpha weak squared, the other is alpha squared. So there's also a difference in their rate. The non-trivial one is the Higgs. I'll come back to that. Uh, uh, in the last part of today's talk, just to give you a, a bit more sense, okay? So you can do a detailed analysis about why they have this ordering and what, uh, what's the ratio between them. They are the more, uh, you can do a better job than what I do here. But in, it, what I want to show you here is I want to set up a basic picture when I collide two protons, apart from the soft and single diffractive collisions, that is not very energetic stuff. Uh, if for the energetic uh, scattering, uh, they have some ranks of those events. Okay, question. Uh, for the calculations of these different cross sections, um, what kind of error bars exist on the center of mass energy? Uh, uh, like how well known is that, I guess? Uh, so let me introduce part of model. Let me see if uh, my next job is to introduce part of model for my plan. Uh, uh, okay, next job. Very quickly, okay? So let me defer your question a bit, but that's a good one, okay? So when you talk about arrow bars, uh, uh, I will show you many sources of arrow bars in my second lecture, okay? But, but let me describe the process, okay? Uh, there's another basic knowledge, very useful for us to understand uh, what is uh, the collider events, okay? That is uh, 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 how to calculate cross-section, okay? I only gave you those cross sections, okay? But I haven't told you how to calculate. And of course, every one of you know how to calculate cross section, right? That is one over flux for two to n scattering, okay? Okay, times the matrix element square, that is Lorentz invariant for this two to n process, okay? Times the, let me use differential form, okay? The, Lorentz invariant the phase space of the n final state particles. Okay? Okay? Depending on your normalization of phase space, let me follow uh, 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 par uh, uh, particle data groups and normalization. I put 2 pi times to the force here. Okay? So this is a very typical cross section. Let me just re give, uh, uh, tell you what uh, we usually uh, take on them. Okay? So obviously, uh, let me don't. Change my mind. Don't use the differential form. Let's say I integrate over already the phase space. Okay. Uh, obviously, cross section is one over lens squared. Uh, sorry, is lens squared is one over uh, energy scale squared. Some uh, energy squared. Right. Okay. That's a typical cross section. Okay. Just from dimensional analysis. Okay, so let me just uh, mention the very special rule of these two components. This is called phase space. This is called matrix element square. Okay, 
the matrix element squared, we often call the dynamics. Different model give you different uh, matrix element. What's the amplitude and transition probability? Okay, this this part is called dynamics. When you try to do your BSN model building and think about their testability, you have to work out this model by model. Okay, and there's this phase-based part is called kinematics. Okay. So the kinematics part from phase space obviously is kind of in some sense universal. Okay, it describes the uh, n particle final state's behavior. Of course, it's a function of many things, their mass, etc. Okay, okay. So, um, but just to set up the the very basic picture. Okay, the phase space of n particles is defined as i equals one. To n, okay. And delta four is a kind of particle physics convention. We put some initial four momentum minus the sum of the final momentum of the i particles. I hope you can see see this. Okay, you cannot. <laughs> uh, later on, it may show up. Okay, uh, so uh, 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 yeah, uh, d three. I divide by uh, two pi cube to e i. Okay, so uh, uh, it's a product of the a single particle uh, uh, phase space times uh, overall energy momentum conservation. Okay, we uh, typically we absorb this part into the phase space definition. Okay, but I just give you a naive counting here uh, because uh, so. Let, let me see if I can make it more with, oh, maybe it's visible here already. Okay, so just give a sense of how, how do we do counting here, okay? This delta function has mass dimension minus four, obviously, right? And uh, uh, this is part of mass dimension three. There's a mass dimension one in the denominator, okay? So let's ask for one particle state. One particle final state, what's mass dimension? Can count. This is minus four plus three, minus one, so it's minus two, okay? So one particle state has mass dimension minus two, okay? In fact, you can look up any textbook, it's roughly pi over s hat, I'm going to introduce later, of s hat minus the m, where your particle want to be. Um, uh, oh, one minus m. Okay, let me make it dimensionless. Okay, so two particle final states. Okay, is minus four energy momentum times two. Uh, why did I get something mismatch? Mm. I thought, uh, okay, very good. Okay, times two, give me zero. So two particle has mass dimension zero. Okay. Three particle, you can work out further and further. Okay, you can check out the mass dimension of those particles. Okay, but what's also interesting is the relative size between the different number of final state particles. Okay, because you see, every time I introduce a new particle, there's two pi to the cube. Okay, also there's a mass dimension increase, so there'll be so so for n particle final state, you can try to guess. Okay, the guess value. Uh, of n particle final state, mass dimension is s, the central mass energy of n minus two, divided by something, some, some, sixteen pi squared of n minus two times a pi. -ish. Okay. So you can work it out. This is a very approximate formula, but you need to know in a dimensionless counting. Okay. Every time I introduce one more particle in the final state, my phase space volume shrink by 16 pi square. Okay, which means if I want to attach an additional jet, hard jet, or additional photon to this, there's a reduction in my cross section. So the rank of cross section also is number, as a function of number of final state particles. However, I don't show you the full answer because I wrote the Q here. I have a question for you guys for fun. Okay. Suppose I have n massless identical particles in my final state. Okay, what's the phase-based volume? 
Okay. Obviously, you will guess n factorial because that's n identical particles. But there's another important factor. Okay, very big into consider surprising the phase space. Okay, and that term is coming from this delta function, energy momentum conservation. The summation of all those momentum have to obey energy momentum conservation of my initial injection. Okay, and another word of uh, caution. I don't know if uh, David Shi have told you about uh, phase space integral. Okay, uh, in fact, this is only known for the for the massless particles. For the massive ones, uh, we can only write down recursive relations, and uh, it's really hard to populate those the n particle massive particle final states. In particular, I convolute with the dynamics of the individual process to simulate those events very effectively. So one frontier of uh, machine learning study is trying to populate the phase space effectively uh, uh, using various uh, network structures, okay? Neural networks. Okay, good. Uh, so I mentioned the recursive relation, uh, but uh, maybe I don't talk about them uh, given time, the limit on time, okay? Uh, I wrote that in the note, okay? So not surprisingly, I'm behind my schedule of what I want to talk about, um, as predicted. Uh, but now, let me write down what's happening when I smash two products, okay? Um, So we all know, proton is not a fundamental particle, right? Uh, I hope we all know that, right? <laughs> so uh, I haven't told you proton is going to decay either. But <laughs> okay, that's, uh, that's different than your bias, okay? Uh, so we'll see. Uh, proton is not fundamental, okay? So how do we model when we smash two protons, okay? Of course, it's not that we guess it's not fundamental. It's we actually did experiment. It's a very interesting reading. We find there's a particular scaling behavior of the cross section that doesn't match the hypothesis that a proton is a fundamental particle. Then we postulate something make up the proton. Okay, okay. So when we smash proton, what we think using Feynman diagram from left to right, okay, in a very approximate way, I supply you one proton from this side. I supply you one proton from this side, okay? And it's going to smash at each other. Many particles are going to pop out. But the, the model is, okay, in a hard collision, there's a one component of proton actually participates in interaction. Okay, let's part proton A, proton B, part on a, particle A, particle B. They are actually hard scattering and produce some final state particles. Okay, final state particles. Okay, so what's my final state in reality? Time from left to right, okay? Smashing two protons, I have some hard collision I'm of my interest. There's a lot of other particles coming up. So what I'm actually describing or colliding uh, or measuring as colliders is the cross section, hope everyone can see that, of smashing proton A to proton B I can measure a given final state that I try to select with my detector plus x, okay? The x thing means many things happening here or even something happening here, some soft stuff happening here. So this is called the inclusive cross-section. Inclusive, okay? Okay, so um, we think, we model, uh, you question? Uh, these like quarks coming off hitting other quarks coming off? Uh, you mean when, when this proton, this dot, provide a quark, right? Mm -hmm. it hits another quark, okay? That's the process I'm drawing. So you wonder what if this quark hits another proton? Uh, yeah, like these, these quarks coming off the... Yeah. Ah, you, oh, sorry. You, you mean those part, those part. The, the, the X part hitting other. That's a great question. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, let me think. It's mm, a great question. Uh, I, the, the claim is you can do an estimate yourself. Uh, uh, given the information I provided here, okay? You can try to do an estimation. Next class, I will give you a relevant example for this and where we can estimate. 
uh, those those events. Okay. Um, okay. But leading order, we don't we don't need to worry about that. Okay. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, so let me give you a hint. Okay. When we try to smash two two bunch of protons, each of each of them have 10 to 11 protons. How many collision of interest are actually happening? Okay, two protons with uh, 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 um, each bunch with 10 to 11 proton. Okay, let's say I try to measure the largest cross section that I can directly de detect the final state, which is a digit event. Okay, uh, you can ask me yourself how many, how often this happens. Then you think, what's the reminiscent of that? Was probably for the remnant of that hitting another proton. Okay, okay. But, but let me write down this formula. This formula, I, it's an awesome formula. I'm behind my schedule, but it's an awesome formula for me to enter today's lecture. Okay, because everyone should question this formula. Okay, um, that's what I've been using. Okay, um, what do we think? We think this inclusive cross section is a particle one. Okay. Using an abstract quantity called x1, there are particle 2, x2, times a function, a magic function <laughs> of seeing a particle A from proton A. So proton A gave me a particle A with probability f if the A carries a momentum x1 fraction of the mother particle's momentum. So let me define x1. x1 is defined as PA over PA. Okay, so uh, okay, so carries this fraction of the energy. I write down a magic symbol here called the mu f. Uh, I write down then times the probability for me to find a particle b coming from and the proton b carrying momentum x two fraction with another magic quantity of mu f times. The, this quantity cross section, where, which we know how to calculate. Okay, that's the diagrams I have been drawing, and that's what's uh, described here. This uh, cross section of A B going to F. Okay, with some dependence in quantity. Okay, so that's the cross section. Okay, that's the thing I was reporting here. That's what we are going to measure. From particle physics, we believe we can calculate that by calculating by calculating by calculating this process, because this process is this thing with a head. We call it a partonic partonic cross section cross section. Okay, and part this is a. Let me emphasize and give you the name to those particles again. Okay, a proton A, proton B, or in general, and you know, uh, uh, you know, particle A, particle B. Okay, I have a probability to find a component called A. We actually call it the parton. Okay, it's like a part of the other particle. I think Feynman named this. Okay, uh, parton A times the probability to find part on B from, uh, from particle B, okay? Carrying, each carrying this fraction of their mother particle's energy, okay? I, I assume this daughter particle is parallel with my mother particle, okay? It inherits the momentum just by this X fraction. All particles are massless because I'm doing high energy collisions, okay? Times this uh, central mass, this, this uh, a core part of the cross section, which is a hard collision, that what has I have been calling hard, because the hard one has the actual collision energy that is the daughter particle one as the fraction times daughter particle two's fraction times the total uh, uh, Mandel's time variable my collision energy. I have a question? Can you tell me if you touched on the scale at which you perform this factorization? That's right. Yeah, that's right. So very good. Let me repeat the question: uh, Is do I need to assume there's a scale where I can, uh, 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 where I allow my in myself to write down this cross section to be factorized as this? Okay. So this whole thing, I collect like two particles, making it a core of hard collision convoluting with certain probability function, is called a factorization. 
okay? Which means the collision process factorized into a hard collision part and the soft part, okay? Okay, the question is, of course, you need to define a scale below which you believe that is absorbed into this function, probability function, okay? Uh, above which you want to do the hard collision calculation. That's a magic argument I wrote down here, mu f, factorization scale. I haven't made a choice yet, but I'm just writing down the general formalism, there's a scale, okay? And for the hard collision part, of course, I need to know my factorization scale and also, there's another scale called the renormalization scale, okay? Uh, you all love QFT. That's one of the beautiful features of a QFT. The, the, what's the proper scale I evaluate to my, uh, uh, my, my, my couplings, et cetera, to describe the process, okay? Okay, so uh, any other questions about this formula? Okay, uh, I'm far behind my schedule, but, uh, but I think, uh, uh, I should uh, talk to your uh, classmates about uh, your interpretations of this formula, okay? This property is function f, okay? It's called the part on distribution function. Okay, okay, we call it the PDF, of course. Uh, that creates a lot of trouble when you Google PDF, you will get Adobe PDF, uh, not, <laughs> not a part on distribution function. Okay, so uh, I'm, I think I'm out of time. I'm not going to pro plot this part on distribution function for you, and um, uh, uh, but next class I will talk about it, okay? So there are many questions you should ask yourself. Why does this formula work? How come I can write things in a factorized way? The, shouldn't the proton, those particles, talk to each other when I collide them, why, why I write the, this way, and why only one proton interact with the other, why don't two protons interact with the other proton, et cetera. You can ask all those questions, okay? It's a very fun question to ask, and, and you, you should also question whether this formula is correct, and also there seems to be a magic function called PDF. How do we define that? How do we measure that? Just to give you a hint, this is non uh, okay. There's a part of that is non perturbative because we're talking about finding particles in a strong interacting object, okay? It's non-calculable. So, so it's very convoluted and fun. And I hope uh, I leave this for you to think about uh, uh, tonight and tomorrow we'll talk more about it. Okay, thanks.